The following interview was conducted with Betty Reed for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, August 17, 2010, in her residence in Lafayette. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. <laughs> Welcome, Betty, and thank you very much. Well, thank you. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents oh, in early okay. years. Well, I was uh, born in 1923 in, uh, on a farm near West Point, Indiana. That was my family farm, four generations. And uh, then my dad was a school teacher. He had his degree in Purdue from agriculture. And uh, then he got his teacher's license. And uh, we lived all over the state of Indiana. I went to so many schools because this was during the Depression. And they decided they didn't need ag teachers, you know. <laughs> so you had to move. <laughs> so we moved. And, uh, but I, uh, I lived in um, south of Terre Haute, a small town called Pie Meadow. Then dad got a job in Crown Point. And then we moved to Shipshawana, which is the other corner of the state. And then we moved to uh, Fountain City, which is just north of Richmond. And then we moved to Kellen. And that's when I joined the service. <laughs> okay. Tell us a little about grade school and high school. What, oh. what sort of grade school and then what high school was like? Well, they were just uh, very small schools, very sure. small town. And I graduated uh, from Fountain City. Uh, we, I only went there one year, which is not the easiest thing to do my senior year. Oh, wow. But um, uh, I graduated from Fountain City in 41, and then I went to Purdue for one year. And How did you happen to select Purdue, and what was it like when you were here? I don't think I could have gone any place else with my because grandmother and my dad. And <laughs> it was family. Sure. <laughs> it right. really was. And my grandmother lived on West Lafayette, and I lived with her. So okay. it, that cut the cost considerably. Right. Well, and tell us about what campus was like then. When well, you I had to walk. I was in home ec. And uh, I had to walk clear across, because grandmother lived just a block from Mackey Arena. So I had all the clear across the campus. Well, it wasn't too bad, except in wintertime. Yeah, right. We almost got blown off the path. But um, and there must have been a lot of houses around there, around, around Northwestern then, where Mackey is now. There were houses, I guess. Yeah, okay. oh yeah. She lived okay. on a, uh, Evergreen. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. sure. And then, uh, and then she moved, and then she bought a smaller house. But uh, no evergreens. So when I lived on, and Sylvia, she lived on Sylvia at one time. But uh, no, she was so fond of Purdue. And Where were the, were the was home ec classes? Were they in what was now known as Matthews Hall? Did you have a? I don't classes? know the current okay. halls, Catherine. Okay. Um, it was the street that goes south of that is that State Street. Yeah. The one, well, it was in the far corner on State that Street, across Matthews. from the ag campus. Yeah. yeah, it probably was Matthews, because that's a building yeah. that's been around for a yeah. long time, yeah. more so than Stone Hall. Stone yeah. Hall was yeah. newer then. Yeah. And the campus is, was not very no. busy, because this was during the war. Oh, yeah, just before the war. Right, yeah. okay. 41, yeah. Well, I was, a, I guess I was a freshman when Pearl Harbor happened. But, um, what, do you remember what the campus did when they happened? To, did they oh, I remember, down? yes. I was trying to think who was the president then. Oh, Elliot. Ed, was Ed Elliot during the Elliot war? was president from okay. 22 to when, uh, to 44. Yeah. Well, he had a, um, called a big meeting at the um, music hall and wanted for all students. And, uh, of course, there weren't as many students as there are now. Sure. And then There he, probably weren't the one thing he told many us, girls either on campus. No. Huh. And he told us, you know, don't think you have to join right now. Give it some thought, you know. Try and finish your semester. And he really gave a pep talk. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so that's what he did. But, um, yeah, that was, and then uh, I finished the year, and then I went home. And, and uh, the home at that dad. time was what, Richmond? Your parents were living in Richmond? Uh -huh, yeah, okay. Uh -huh, yeah. And that's when you decided to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> had Dor had Dorothy had start had the spars had already been started? Yes. Well, okay. forty two. Uh, okay. I think yeah, fall forty two. Yeah, and then she was the first one ever asked to serve. Well, she was in the navy. She joined the navy. She and Helen Sleeman okay. were officers in the waves, the okay. navy, and uh, the Coast Guard women were we dressed like the navy. Uh, we were really under the navy anyway. I mean, the Coast Guard was, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, no, she and. Helen were both in the Navy, and then when uh, President Roosevelt established the women for the Coast Guard, why he promoted them to right. okay. be captain. Well, tell us a little about the, the, the life as a spar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have no regrets whatsoever. It was, uh, we just, uh, 
we worked hard. We worked uh, eight-hour days, and but it really wasn't. Uh, I, I think that might have been the one disappointment was you know I was working in an office or a store just like I could do if I was back home. Right, right. And uh, but uh, I, I just really had uh, my friends, my storekeeper friends were just wonderful gals, and we had a lot of fun together. And of course, like I said, I was stationed in New Orleans. Well, you couldn't be there and not go in the French Quarter once in a while. And uh, well, tell us the tell us for the research the unit that you were in after the, where you had your initial training was in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it was they took over the Coast Guard took over a huge pink hotel, and it was just a block from the beach. Oh. <laughs> I was on the second floor for the first six weeks, and then the, the in fourth the hotel. floor. Yeah. And the fourth floor, but that we had six beds in one room, you know, so it was it was a little crowded, but the storekeeper wasn't too bad, and we did have a lot of uh, homework we had to do, uh, you know, it was just like going to school. Really yeah, were, they were classes. Yeah, yeah, and all day. Well, no, we had calisthenics. <laughs> that was part of our day. Sure. But uh, and no, it was. Uh, I, I never regretted doing it once, and then we. Uh, now got our orders, and we. Uh, but we you had 10 tell days them, at home. tell the you signed up for the, what unit that you decided to serve in. Oh, kind of well, uh, yeah, we could take tests, and there was yeoman, storekeeper, cook, and bakers. I don't know what the others were, mm -hmm. but uh, I was always a fairly strong math student. So they said, "Well, you've got storekeeper school." I don't think you had a choice to get out of it if you wanted to. Sure, but uh, no, I all new roommates, and it was. Uh, did they, the training was still in? Yes, mm -hmm. all, everything was done in Florida. Okay, yeah. okay. Except the officer's training, that was done at Broughton, Connecticut there. Okay. Been, that had been officer's school for sure. many, many years. But um, no, it was. Uh, what about when you got, your, when you, they have graduation? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we got Did our, Dorothy happen to come to that? No, oh, no, okay. No, I don't know what, no, she wasn't there. It was strictly all storekeepers and uh, the, Gal that was head of the storekeeper school, that's who passed them out. But uh, no. Did your parents come for the. No, no. Oh, okay. No, the traveling wasn't that easy in those oh, days. Oh, I'm sure, because it's yeah. the war is on. Yeah. Right. No, you, you know, gasoline was rationed. Right. You couldn't even. Uh, I know we didn't uh, make too many trips when I was home. But. Um, Did you get leave while you were doing the, in the training? Did I? What? Did leave? Could you get home at all? Did no, you? No, no, no. We and then after you finished? We joined in, uh, the, well, our train trip down to Palm Beach, Florida was in January, 1st of January, not the first, but the first week or so of January. And then uh, boot camp was six weeks, and then storekeeper school was five and a half months. So it was July before I got home. Yeah. But uh, that was a, I, uh, of course, was in my uniform, and I was the very first woman in Fountain City to be in the service. <laughs> It was really. I bet. Wow. <laughs> I even, there's a girl that's over uh, West Side, uh, Beverly, uh, well, her maiden name was Baker, that's what I always think about. But I I see her at meetings and things. She says, Oh, I never get over you in that blue uniform, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget. The first right? one I ever saw. <laughs> I said, What is this? You yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> What's she doing here? Yeah. But no, I had 10 days and. And then I think the next leave I had, mother and dad had moved to Kentland, so I really didn't know too many people up there, but I went home. Right. Yeah. And then so. t tell us a little about what you did down in New Orleans when you were, that's where you were stationed. Yeah. Was uh, over. On Canal Street, which is the main drag, mm -hmm. uh, it goes, we were just two blocks from the Mississippi River, and that was a naval clothing store, and we, uh, we sold clothes, we ordered clothes, we tallied the sales at the end of the day, we kept the books, um, we even <coughs> had to shelve things sometimes, but uh, no, it was just a, like a regular job. Where, you know? where was your housing? Was it close by there? or what? Uh, Three of us had an apartment, oh, and okay. we were the very last street of the French Quarter. So to get to work, we had to walk through the French Quarter, <laughs> or take the trolley. <laughs> that made it kind of nice. Oh, though. we had uh, really... Um, this, this is, I wish I had that picture, but I don't. Jim took it, but there's a picture of Mary Meyer, who was my best buddy. She was from Chicago, and myself sitting on bar stools at the Casino Royal, which was a, a club sure. on uh, on I Bourbon think. Street. Right. And uh, anyway, the uh, bartender was from Chicago, and he just latched on to us, and uh, 
I know sometimes a fellow would come up and ask you to dance, and Jim would go, no. <laughs> so we didn't do it. But he and his wife had us to dinner on Sunday, and his wife's This family. is the owner of the, of the Cafe Rock? Yeah, oh. yeah. And his uh, wife came from a very large Italian family, and they had huge spaghetti suppers, and we were always invited to that. They just kind of adopted us, sure. which made the stay just a lot nicer. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it was fun. But we had a lot of we had a lot of good times, and and then we were after the uh, war ended. Why we were sent to the uh, <coughs> separation center to discharge men, and that was on Lake Pontchartrain, which was quite a ways from where we lived. So we got a new apartment on the lake. And did uh, you have to stay there for a little while be before you got separated from the service? Oh yeah, I worked. Uh, let's see, it was at forty two, forty three. I think I was only in the clothing locker a year, oh, okay. and then I was a year and a half at the separation center. Okay. But we had ships come in with, you know, we'd really be busy, and let all the men getting discharged. Sure, right. So, uh, but that's what we did. We figured if they're paid, if they had coming to them, uh, how much, uh, what was the mileage to their hometown because they got so much a mile to get back home to buy their, well, it was train or bus ticket. We didn't have airplanes in those days. Right. But we became travel agents. <laughs> Trying to figure out the We best had a way. map in front of us all sure. the time. Yeah. But uh, no, it was, uh, and uh, being on the lake was really nice, you know, when we weren't busy. Nice we location. Out, yeah, we could go out in boats and sit on the water. Yeah. No, it was, uh, and then when they disbanded spars, why well, we had no choice. We had to get out. Did they, did they leave you, did you leave the service from down there? Is mm -hmm. that where the mm -hmm. separation mm -hmm. was? Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then. Then what came next after you got out of the service? Then what you just what well, you I think I told you that the VA was re recruited okay. women, and uh, they were opening a lot of new offices because of all the veterans coming forth. Sure. And uh, so Mary and I both got a job with the VA in Chicago because I was only about sixty miles from Chicago where mother and dad lived. Right. So I worked up there four years for the VA. Okay. Did mm -hmm. you did you live there too, and then just go home on weekends? Yeah, I lived with Mary. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That was her home, and uh, so it was real handy. And, right. Yeah. And uh, but I didn't drive or anything then, so I had to take the bus or sure. train anywhere I went. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, did, where did you meet your husband? Then when did you get married? And then what came? Oh next? well, he was from uh, Kentland, okay. where my mother and dad lived, yeah. and I went home on weekends and vacations, and uh, had a friend that knew him and uh, wanted to know if I'd like to go dancing over in Illinois. And I said, yeah, I'd like to. So that's how I met him. <laughs> he was a good dancer. Excuse me. Okay. Um, Two nieces and a nephew. But my husband was the oldest of eight children. He had something like 16 cousins, first cousins. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and all these brothers and sisters, you know, it's really, I inherited a lot. <laughs> lot. Then, where, then where, where did you live? And where, tell me a little about your life. Oh, you well, uh, when, uh, after you got uh, married. We, after I got married in 1954, why, my dad had the Lutz farm near Shalin. And he asked, Bud was a farmer, and so we moved to Shalin, and we lived there 28 years. Our kids went to uh, McCutcheon and Southwestern. We had three children. I have a son. Well, Tim will be 60 this year. He lives in Sacramento, and Jim lives in Michigan. He works for Ford, and then Susan, the youngest. Our kids were six years apart, so we were <laughs> in school, PTA for a long time. <laughs> but um, <coughs> Susan is, lives in Indy. So, uh, uh -huh. Did any of them come to Purdue? Susan and Tim are both Purdue grads. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Jim has an de associate degree in gunsmithing. That's what he worked on. Purdue didn't offer that, but uh, no, they both went to Purdue. Yeah. Uh -huh. so. well, and when did you? And, move? and Tim says, "You tell." And he lives in California. You tell somebody you graduated from Purdue, they really think you're top drawer. <laughs> he says it has a fabulous reputation out west. Well, it, a lot of people also think that it's a private school because the states, the the, the land grants always have the word state in there, and yeah. Purdue yeah. is not. No. And my brother was here recently, and he wanted me to, to explain to him, and I gave him the background <laughs> so we know about it. But it's very, it's very true. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah, that's what he said. Did you live there most of your married life then, or when did you move to uh, Twenty eight, and then we moved to town. Okay. Uh, my husband uh, farmed, but he was also the uh, electrical supervisor at Saney Hospital. Oh, okay. He was an okay. electrician, and he was in the uh, Air Force, uh -huh. and he was an electrician in the Air Force. And uh, 
but uh, he worked there. So then, when we quit farming, why? Well, uh, what what kind of farm did you have? Did you have crops or oh, animals yeah. or both? beans, of? corn? Uh huh. We had Hereford cows, right. one milk cow, which he wasn't too happy about. <laughs> <laughs> he was raised on a farm that had 30. Oh, oh wow. And they good. got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and four, when he got home from school, that's what they had to do was sure. milk. Oh. I'll say one thing, they had strong hands. Oh, I know. <laughs> they really did. He oh, I'm sure grabbed they did. your hand, you knew it. Yeah. But um, no, uh, he was a farmer all his life. Uh -huh. and, uh, but then we had a chance to sell the farm and we decided to do that. So. Then did he take the job at St. E's? He was working part-time at oh, St. E's at that time, yeah. And then mm -hmm. he retired from St. E. Mm -hmm. And uh, he died of cancer uh, seven years ago. Oh, okay. So, uh, but uh, well, it's changed, not uh, the happiest uh, right. situation with no children here, you know. I'm sure. really by myself, but... You got some friends and you oh, yeah, there a Oh, yeah, i got some wonderful neighbors. Right. And <laughs> when the daughter in Indianapolis is great. Oh, yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Except is this years. the house that you moved into when you came here? Yeah, oh. yeah, oh, yeah. But used to go up down 9th Street Hill when he went to work. Sure. <laughs> he said, that house is for sale. And the lady who owned it, she was going to move with her son to Arizona. And uh, <clears throat> she was a farm girl, and she was so happy to sell it to a farmer. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sort of like keeping it in the family. Oh, yeah, I think she felt that way. She really was a funny lady. Yeah. But uh, she and Bud had real good rapport. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, this was, I don't think I showed you this. This was uh, from the Separation Center. Oh. They, they put out, like, you know, a yearbook. Sure. Okay. And it's got Let's some talk pictures. a little bit about the uh, christening of the Dorothy Stratton. Oh, Stratton. yes, you, that's what's came. most correct. Yeah, that's um, how you got the invitation and how look at this Well, one. I just, I don't know how I got it. Uh, of course, like I said, I was in Washington two years ago, so they know about me and my address and right. so forth. What were you in Washington for? That was that panel discussion. They invited five of us there to talk about the... Was this before Cong uh, uh, Committee of Congress or... No, what? it was before an open an audience. I would say there was about 400. So a lot of them were active duty Coast Guard people. Oh, so it had to do with the Coast Guard? Yeah, 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 the Coast Guard. Those that have been affiliated or involved yeah. with it mm -hmm. and worked And we, each one of us told our story. I I guess I don't have those pictures. Yeah. Um, Jim took them. Um, we told our stories of our time and service, and then we were open to questions. And then we had a dinner with the commandant. It was just a very nice... Uh, nice affair. Yes. I, well, the Coast Guard does everything that way. Oh, it sounds like it. Just like this, you know. This was top drawer. <laughs> I just... Uh, well, listen, my I think kids that was were a both impressed. I'd love to have gone. Yes, <laughs> uh, they were. My kids couldn't believe it. You know, I said, well, that's Coast Guard. That's the way we do things. When, uh, you got, how did the true. invitation, and did they check your, what about security? Did you have to do no, security check? No, we mm -hmm. didn't. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. No. Now, did somebody, somebody went with you, your daughter and, and my son? son. Oh, yeah. And you had a little problem with the, I understand, uh, the luggage. Oh, I didn't. We Where'd didn't you get fly from Indianapolis? Yeah, well, it was. Well, you know, flying yeah. today is. Oh, it was just awful. Well, Susan went to Walmart and bought us 90s. <laughs> Oh. And me a new blouse because I didn't have it. You know, we just didn't have except what we had on. So that was. Uh, Where did you fly into? The, the new Orleans. Is, you oh. can't fly. There was no direct routes to Mississippi. Okay. And then we had to, uh, and then of course when our luggage, they had to bring it to us. You know, oh, from sure. New Orleans. So it was very inconvenient. How, didn't you take a car from New Orleans? We rented a car. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so we had Did you see any uh, vestiges of Katrina along the route at all? No, I was no. surprised. We okay. did not see one. And we were right on the Gulf, you know, sure. for the christening. And no, I did not see any. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. okay. So I think they had really cleared it up. Right. But, you know, the Coast Guard was taking care of us. Sure, so, that's right. And okay. they would take care of us. All right. <laughs> Tell us a little about what the event and what all you did. Well, and everything. it was, um, like I think I mentioned before, my birthday celebration. Tell us, well, for oh, the tape I need now. to do it again. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, the 21st, and that's the day that we flew down to New Orleans, was my 87th birthday. And uh, I knew that my kids knew it, but and my neighbors, because we always celebrate birthdays in the neighborhood. But anyway, my neighbors had uh, a cake delivered to the motel. And uh, actually, one of my neighbors is from Mississippi, so. But um, it, has, it had the Coast Guard uh, emblem on it. It was uh, red, white, Research and blue. Researcher, she has a picture of it. It's great. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. It was just and dark chocolate, which is my favorite. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, we. Uh, I said, well, we got to get some plates. And Susan says, 
oh, I've got plates. And she knew they were going to do it. She so, had a little inkling, right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, then uh, while we were still sitting there looking at the cake, why uh, the doorbell, somebody rang the doorbell, and, and uh, Jim opened the door, and the six women from Purdue came in singing, Happy Birthday, Dear Betty. <laughs> Who were also there for the event. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, they were representing Purdue. Where right. That's part of Dorothy Stratton's right. heritage. And, uh, but no, we just had a had a real good time. What and sort of events did they tell about the christening and also was there well, anything the, yeah, else? Well, then, um, and I mentioned before that Northrop Grumman, who was the company that made the cruisers, um, they hosted everything. And we had a fabulous lunch, you know. With, I can't tell you how many different serving tables, and and then we uh, had tables. Where was the lunch at? at the place where at the base where they were going yeah, with the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. That's where it was. It was one of their buildings. But anyway, and we had uh, um, some of their employees, Northrop Grumman employees, ate with us, and uh, told us about doing the ship and what they were doing and what still needed to be done, and. Uh, and then we had uh, the ceremony. Uh, the first lady, she could gave you a, get she gave could a real you, nice talk. Could you go into the t to where it was before she came? No, no, uh, no, we couldn't. So you had to wait. Yeah, well, not much. No, the dinner was when the dinner was over. I was almost so that, this was before the christening. Yeah, had the event. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, it was very nice, and. Uh, but, uh, Yeah, this was a program. Oh, okay. okay. I don't she think has it has a, a dinner on it. Yeah. Okay. But now I do have two of these, and you can have this one. Okay, okay. okay. it'll give you some information. <laughs> when uh, then after what what occurred? Now, did you have to wait until she left, or was there recep there was a reception afterwards? No, no, there we was didn't. nothing. Uh, there, yes, there was. Oh. Um, we had been told we would have our pictures taken with Michelle, which really, you know, was something. And, uh, but then it came that it was a group picture of the World War II women and Michelle, and we did have that picture taken after the ceremony. Okay. And then, are we, you were, then we were dismissed. Are you in the picture? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. But I haven't gotten a copy of it oh, yet. okay. The Coast Guard took the picture, so they're supposed to send it to us. And, uh, but, uh, did no, you, it did would you be get the a chance 18 women that were in that one picture I had. Did you get a chance at least to say hello to her? Oh, she came over and hugged every one of us. She went up and down the line. <laughs> That's it was so sweet. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's really great. You know, yeah. and then she stood in the middle of us. Uh huh. But uh, no, she went. Uh, she made the trip. So there were eighteen of us, uh, World War Two women. There were other Coast Guard women there, but they weren't in that. Right. Group. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. And then what? A lot of pleasant memories. Yeah. Uh, what uh, happened afterward? Did you did you stay for a while, or what? What happened after the event was over? Oh well, um, we went out to dinner with uh, several of the Coast Guard. I, I know two of the women who are work at headquarters. I've met them at other sure. things. And uh, so we took them out to dinner. And that was uh, fried. The fried restaurant. <laughs> Kitty's fried, fried, fried fruit. <laughs> was, it, was it tasty, though? It was pretty good? Oh, it was very good, yeah. And we were right on the Gulf in a big old home. And uh, no, it was, it was very nice. Yeah. And then um, the next night, uh, we had dinner with the Purdue women. We all ate together. That's nice. So, uh, uh, and so, and most of them you knew. Oh yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, I was really surprised. Right. Yeah. I didn't know they were going to be there until they marched in and said, "Sang Happy Birthday." I was really surprised. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, let's talk? Do you have any hobbies or special interests? Oh, oh genealogy is my okay. hobby. How are you doing with that? Oh, I'm. Probably worn out, you know. <laughs> you but I volunteer at the library down oh, do there. Oh, yeah, do you? At the Historical library. Society? Or yeah. They, okay. <laughs> it's a separate building, but. Right. Uh, and I, uh, uh, one of the things I've done for, I think, mm, I can't tell you how long. I know I went back and did all the way back to the 50s, but I make a listing on the computer every day of the obituaries in the paper so that if somebody wants to look, wants to know if we have any information on someone and when did their grandparent die, then they can check that if they you don't know. You add that to the files? Or yeah, we have files there. So I do, But I do it every day, so keep it up to date. So that's one of the chores I do. And then, of course, uh, I belong to 9th Street Hill. We have a real good organization here. Sure, right. 
get together with the coffee and the women that are here. Right. So Tell us about this. The she's wearing a T-shirt, Veterans Memorial Parkway. <laughs> Tell us what that is for the researchers. Okay. Well, it was in July. They dedicated the uh, the mayor and his committee, who my neighbors want a member of it, uh, decided that it should be uh, the 350 should be honoring the veterans. So they changed the name to this, and they had uh, well, my neighbor who was on the committee knew that I had my uniform. And of course, Clarence Maneer. Yeah, Clarence Maneer, uh, who is uh, Air Force. No, I think he's just Army. But he's had he appears in a lot of places. He's always at the Legion in his uniform. And uh, he was my husband was on the firing squad for the Legion, and Clarence was on it. So we knew he and his wife. So anyway, they asked Clarence, and they asked me if we would participate in the uh, ribbon cutting. I think I've got a picture of that somewhere. Anyway, it was that's okay. Yeah. It was really <laughs> three of us on one pair of scissors, <laughs> but we were in our uniforms, and the mayor, of course, was in between us. So it was real nice, and and then uh, and you got a they got a shirt too. Yeah, and then they had a dinner afterwards, which was really very nice. But um, yeah, this is and this because my neighbor was on the committee. This is my husband's memorial flag. They took a picture of it. How nice. Yeah, so it's really that's has a really special, special meeting. Yes, yes, it does. That's very special. And the signs that are on the street uh -huh. have his. So he would have been so proud of that because oh. he was a good veteran. Those are the ones that they selected his flag, and those are the ones that yeah. are there? Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's great. Very good. Yeah, it's. Uh, oh. Well, my neighbors are, for the most part, are patriotic. Right. And here, well, you know, we have the flags up on the 4th of I July. Know. We work yeah, at that. I love the street anyway, so yeah. I come up quite a bit. And I have a Coast Guard flag and uh, Bud's Air Force flag, and we fly those on the house. So if you come up the hill, you can always see them. They're right on these two windows. Okay. But uh, we have, uh, I think it's the track team for Jeff. They put up the flags for us. We give a donation to them, and they so that's really nice. That is very nice, because uh, we're a help. all getting older. <laughs> it's a bit of a help, you know. <laughs> How about uh, any any awards that you've gotten, or any honors that you'd like to share? Anything special? No, I don't think so. But it's nice to yeah be invited with uh, things of that type. How yeah. about uh, a Purdue tradition? Oh well, I think I you know my grandmother and right. she was so proud of being a and the women in those there weren't too many, you know. Yeah. I remember her class picture, and I think there might have been only five. Oh, I bet. And, uh, but um, <coughs> she knows she was very proud of her Purdue tradition, and my dad and his brother both went to Purdue. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. And also, I think another tradition you shared with me a little bit off the record or off the tape is the volleyball. I mean, you still. Oh, you, I, yeah. I, I mean, that's <laughs> really caught on, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. I love the Purdue Volleyball. You still go and to the games? And the women's basketball, too. Right. Yeah, we go to those. Yeah. That's very nice. My neighbors uh, go, and so I have a ride. It's uh, uh, we, Mary Sadowski and I have got to get together because uh, I don't think I can drive over there anymore for the volleyball because the parking lot is way at the back, and that isn't the best walk. It's a for bit somebody of a my walk. age, that yeah, it's a bit of a far walk, and of yeah. course with all that construction going on over there. Oh yeah, they, they, that's been that for the last two years. <laughs> I, so I, I saw Mary the other day. I said, "Well, I'm not sure about volleyball. I, <laughs> I've ordered my basketball tickets, but I haven't ordered the volleyball." But no, I I love sport, uh, women's sports. And they've done. We didn't well. have them, you know. When I was, I won. We were in Crown Point. We had a women's basketball team, but then of course when I went to Shipshawana, which is mostly an Amish Mennonite. Didn't have girls in shorts. Uh, there was no basketball, but uh, I would have loved to have been able to play basketball. Yeah, and you've done really well. Yeah, which is, yeah. it's really caught so on, and more and more people are going to the games too, yeah. which is really yeah. nice. Yeah, I know it is. Yeah, we go every. We don't miss them. Yeah. And then uh, the volleyball, but I haven't quite made up my mind about it. Oh well, we'll see. So you got you got a little bit of time. <laughs> um, do you have an outstanding event in your life? Mm. Would you like anything? 50th yeah, wedding anniversary. I thought that was quite a mark, yeah. But um, do you do something special for that? Well, I think the SPAR activities have really, you know, the trip to Washington. Right. And then uh, the one to Mississippi. And uh, kind of renewing I'm the very, marriage. I'm just very proud of the Coast Guard. They do things so well. Right. And uh, I'm proud good. of them in the Gulf, too. I think they're doing a good job down right. there. Exactly. But I never met one that I couldn't get along with or... 
You have a lot of good memories, and I have still a lot of good memories. Right. Yes, I right. do. Yes, and probably the friendships. And, uh, Mary, my best friend, lived in Chicago, and then <coughs> um, Joe Minke, she lived in Southern Illinois, but uh, she got married, and then she moved to California, so uh -huh. I never did get to see her again. Sure. And then uh, Miller, Jane Miller, uh, she lived in Vermont, so you know, quite. A, Never saw her again after we got out either. Sure. But, but you keep in touch. Yeah, ways. but and then uh, another girl, um, she lived in Florida. Her last name was Bella, uh, Regina, Reggie, Reggie, Bella, and uh, she came to Chicago twice to see Mary and I. So we got together, you sure. know. That's nice. But all those girls are gone now, so yeah, it, it makes it uh, makes a difference. Yeah, I would have loved to had somebody, but I think everybody I talked to, they didn't, there wasn't anybody there that they were with. Yeah. It was nice and they're to from see all over people. the country, you know, they were several from California and Florida and quite a few from Florida. It's amazing the size of that class, I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 it was really. All right. But no, we don't. In uh, closing, was there anything that I forgot to ask or anything you'd like to add that I... That <laughs> well, it's been my pleasure, Catherine. Okay. I enjoyed it Thank you, much. Betty. My pleasure, too. Thank you very much.